Today is simply known to most as the August long weekend holiday. It's officially recognized here in the city as Simcoe Day, honoring the city's founder, John Graves Simcoe. But as the city, province and country faces reckoning when it comes to its racial past and present, there are calls to re-examine the way we present our past. The racial history of John Graves Simcoe is a complicated one. Simcoe was Upper Canada's first lieutenant governor and it's credited with abolishing slavery in the region back in 1793, while before it was completely abolished by Britain. Graves also established towns, built roads and infrastructure and implemented trial by jury. Then in 1968, Toronto City Council designated the first Monday in August as Simcoe Day. It sounds like a great legacy, perhaps one to be recognized, but some historians say it's not that simple. We often learn about first or we encounter about him first when people are saying, well, he introduced the first piece of anti-slavery legislation, um, you know, in the British colony. There's There are other parts as well, because when he re left this, his post here as Lieutenant, Lieutenant um, Governor of the province, then he went on to take command as a part of the British Army, who was um, fighting with um, in France so that they could reinstitute in slavery in Haiti. Since May 25th, the day George Floyd was choked to death by a white Minneapolis police officer, streets around the globe have been filled with people protesting ongoing racial injustice, including right here in Toronto. Some of the protests in the city have led to the defacing of statues of Canada's first Prime Minister John A. Macdonald and Edgerton Ryerson. There is a statue of John Graves Simcoe that sits on the grounds of Queen's Park. These statues were erected to honour these men and some say they should be removed. Absolutely something that needs to be revisit, revisited uh, because we, you know, we need to think about what is it that we want to represent in the public spaces that we share as communities, as citizens, um, and do they convey the messages, do they embody um, the ideas that we think are important to us, and if they are not, then they need to be questioned, and they, they you know, what decisions are made, or if it's the removal of the statues, the renaming of streets, um, that that's something, you know, that needs to be, uh, that needs to be looked at. As we celebrate another Simcoe Day, community groups, historians, and educators across the country continue the calls to pull back the the curtains and reveal the full and complete picture of complicated historical figures like John Grave Simcoe.